These mechanisms are based on this book, 507 Mechanical Movements by Henry T. Brown. And I think this book was originally published in 1868. In his book, he created various illustrations of mechanical movements. And also brief descriptions of each one. I've taken these illustrations and I've added a frame, a base, hardware, and any other components needed to create a 3D model. This first one illustrates the transmission of power by simple pulleys and a belt. Number two is similar to number one, except it has a crossed belt. In this case, the direction of the rotation of the pulleys is reversed. You can see this one is going clockwise and this one is turning counterclockwise. Number three is a method of transmitting motion from a shaft at right angles to another by means of guide pulleys. Number four is a method of transmitting motion from a shaft at right angles to another whose axis is in the same plane. Number five is similar to number one with the addition of a movable tightening pulley or idler pulley. This pulley is pressed against a belt to take up slack. The idler pulley is on an arm that pivots and a spring is attached to it to keep tension on it. And number six, the semicircular segment, imparts a reciprocating rotary motion to the two pulleys below. In this one, the semicircular segment is limited in its travel. So there's a reciprocating motion to the lower pulleys. Number seven is a little more interesting because it uses not only the pulleys and the belt but also some gears to change direction and disengage this shaft. So based off this illustration, here is this pulley, the belt, three pulleys on this end, and three bevel gears on this side. I've also added a motor to run this. 
This is the main pulley. When the belt is in the middle, it runs on this pulley. This pulley spins freely, so the shaft is disengaged. When it's on this pulley, this pulley is attached to this shaft. It goes to the other side, is attached to this bevel gear. So when this pulley turns in this direction, this gear is engaged to this bevel gear and you can see spins these arrows clockwise. When a belt is on this pulley, this pulley is directly connected to this bevel gear and this is hollow so it rides on this shaft. So when this pulley is moving in this direction, it's engaged with this bevel gear and turns this counterclockwise. So this pulley will turn it clockwise and this one turns it counterclockwise. So now I'll turn the power supply on and I'll adjust the voltage to the motor to 12 volts. And now you can see that the main pulley is rotating it's on the center, so the shaft is disengaged. When I slide the belt to this pulley, you will see it turn clockwise. Now again, that shaft is turning this pulley and turning this clockwise. And I'll move it back to the center, so it's disengaged, and then move it to this pulley, and now you can see it's turning counterclockwise. Number eight uses speed pulleys, and these are used on a lathe or a drill press or other mechanical tools, and it varies the speed according to the work that's being operated upon. So you can see that these pulleys are stepped, and this is the same except in the opposite direction, and depending where the belt is, this side will either speed up or slow down. So you can see when the belt is on this end, it's moving very slowly. And as I move it to the next pulley, it speeds up. And then the next one is a little faster yet. And then on the end, this would be high speed. Number nine uses cone pulleys for the same purpose as number eight and is used in machines which are required to run with the gradually increased or diminished speed. As I slide the belt from one side to the other, the speed of the driven pulley increases or decreases. The driving pulley will always run at the same speed, or RPM, but the speed of the driven pulley will vary depending upon the location of the belt. I've added a piece of reflective tape on here so you can watch the speed change on this tachometer.
Number 10 is a modification of number 9, and the pulleys are just a different shape. And here you can see the contour of these two pulleys, and they match if you held them up together. If you watch this piece of tape on here, you can see it speed up as I move the belt to the other side. And then you can see how much slower it is, again, on this side. Number 11 is the same as number 3. Two pulleys at right angles, but without the guide pulleys. So this is just two pulleys, and they're at right angles to each other. When you have two pulleys at right angles to each other, the point where the belt leaves one pulley must be perpendicular to the center of the other pulley where it arrives. So if this is going in this direction and the belt is leaving here, it has to arrive here on this pulley in the center of the pulley. And you can see viewed in this direction where the belt leaves the pulley here and arrives at this pulley, it's in this plane perpendicular to the center of this pulley. If the belt is not in the same plane as the center of the pulley, then it will work itself off of the pulley. And I'll show you an example of that by replacing these two towers with these shorter ones. So now you can see with these shorter towers on here, Here's where the belt leaves this pulley, and I put it in the middle of this pulley, but it's going to want to correct itself and pull itself to the bottom of this pulley so that it's perpendicular here. You see how it pulls itself to the bottom of the pulley and eventually comes off the pulley.